Right, Chris, tell me why you love BMXing. I started riding about seven years ago. I just saw people doing it down a skate park and thought that's something I'd be interested in. And yeah, ever since then, I've just kept it up. It's something really in, like individual you can do, something quite creative. And so what, how did you get into the photography side of it? Um, one of my friends was running a website and I started taking pictures for that just to like... Just for fun? So, yeah, just so we could show our friends what we were doing. Like, you know, so if someone was away, they could see what everyone else had been up to and stuff. And uh, yeah, it just progressed from there, like started buying better cameras in the last couple of years. Do you find it helps you because you are a BMXer, you know when to take the picture because you know the trick or...? It definitely, yeah, it definitely helps with the timing and you know kind of what tricks look good and what ramps people are going to do what tricks on, that kind of thing. For someone that wants to take photos of BMXing that's probably not a BMXer like you, what, what top tips could you give them? Um, I'd say you need a lot of patience and you need to be good at communicating with the riders as well so they know what you're trying to do and you understand what they're trying to do and like how difficult it is for them. And yeah, just keep practicing and keep taking lots and lots of pictures. Yeah. And if you can find other people that are more knowledgeable than you as well that can critique your pictures, that's really, really helpful. So what kind of kit do you use? It's a Nikon D200. Basically use it because it's got a good uh, fast flash sync speed. Yep. And it's got a uh, good resolution as well. Yep. And Nikon make a good fish eye for this camera as well, which is another thing that a lot of BMX photographers use. I've got three of these, which are Nikon SP28s. And they're, they're an older Nikon flash, so they're a bit cheaper, but you can use manual power on them, which is the main thing. You want a powerful manual power flash. And would a fast uh, shutter speed or a fast lens work just as well? In some cases, if you're shooting in the daytime, maybe, but in somewhere like this, it's probably not even enough light for that without ruining the image quality by getting noise and stuff in it. And why are you using them? Um, basically, to freeze the motion because the flash, the duration of a flash is a lot faster than even the sync speed of the camera. Yeah. And it also makes the picture look more interesting as well if you bring out detail in the rider with flashes. And what is the flash sync speed? It's one two hundred and fiftieth of a second. And how do you set the flash guns up? I take uh, one of the flashes. Yes. I've got two of these light stands. Right. A little hot shoe adapter on top. So that just clips in there. And then we've got these which are pocket wizard radio triggers and one of these sits on the camera like that and you put another one which plugs into the into the sync port on the flash so when that triggers on the camera it sets off the flash is it manual is it ttl yeah i use all manual control on the camera and the flash as well set all the exposure beforehand and what does that why do you do that uh, it's just too unpredictable otherwise using ttl okay and what camera settings do you use um, usually I'm at the maximum sync speed of the camera for the shutter speed, so 250 of a second. Yep. And then I usually find that um, about f4 is usually enough to catch the light from the flashes and a low ISO like 100, 200. And do you use metering? Uh, usually I just take test shots and use a histogram on the back of the camera. And what about autofocus or anything like that? What settings do you use? Um, I use spots, like one spot focusing to pre-focus and then turn the camera onto manual focus before the rider starts riding. Does the creative lighting system work here? Uh, I haven't personally used it. The flash guns you have to have for that are really expensive. Right. To have three of them would be a lot more than three of these. And what, uh, the overall composition, what are you looking for in the picture? Just looking to tell the story of what's going on and what the place is like, really. about three or four months so as a beginner what kind of kit have you got? Uh, I've got a 400D which is Canon basic entry level model and then I've got a Sigma 15 to 30 millimeter it's like I got it because like because it's got the 1.6 crop and it's got it goes back to 15 mil so it's getting sort of about a 28 mil so like it's not quite fish eye but it's as close as I'm gonna get so. So for the money that's probably the best thing you're looking at? Yeah, it was, it was only about 200 quid. I got it on a deal, so it's quite good. Fantastic. OK, so um, what shot will you be setting up for now? Uh, just set up for a shot on the, on the step up over there. Yeah. It's like, it's, I suppose, like, make a triangle of lights, like a, a main light, a fill light, and a rim down the bottom behind him to like, light up the sides to, like, to separate it from the background. 
And you don't have a pocket wizard, so how will you trigger the flashes? Uh, I've got these nice, cheap and cheerful eBay slaves. All right, OK. And they work just as well, do they? Uh, well, they only go about 30 yards if you're lucky, if you get a good one. But uh, they do the job for me at the moment, but you always want pocket wizards or sky ports, you know, something like that. So, once you've got this set up, you're doing the picture, what are you looking for in your end result? Uh, sort of like a nice, clean picture. You can see what's going on, but from a nice, interesting, interesting perspective. So it's like, you know, so... Crisp, clear, subjects lit up right. Yeah, a bit atmospheric, I suppose you could call it. Yeah. So what made you suddenly get into the photography side of it? Uh, it's, it's a funny story, actually. I was in the woods with my friends, and I had, like, I had a camera phone, and there was these ducks. It's like, I went to take a picture of a duck. And then I took a picture, it's like, it was a really nice landscape. My art teacher was like Lloyd at some point, and then I just, from there, I just built up sort of like that. So you started off getting into photography, then start doing it for BMX? Yeah, I don't know, I only started doing it seriously with BMX the last few months, about okay. three or four months, like properly. I've always sort of done it, but I've never really been too into it. I just sort of Have you found it, it easier because you are a BMXer? Or? Uh, yeah, I, was, I suppose it would be, because like, you look at the images in, in, in magazines and stuff, so you know, sort of like, how it's got to look like, and, and, and you know the tricks, so you know when you've got to press the shutter. And you know, and you obviously know if the, if the trick looks good, and you might have to get someone to do it a few times to get it right. Yeah, yeah, everyone says, like, do it, do it one more time, sometimes about 30 times when I take a picture. So. What kind of tips would you give to somebody who's, who's like yourself, not been doing it very long? Starting out. Yeah, just starting out. Uh, get, get a 35mm and just shoot some pictures off. Get practicing. Yeah, and then once you've got a, once you've got your composition sorted, get get some lights and then just go from there. Start with like a 28mm and a, and a 50mm on a, on a 35mm. It hasn't got my auto focus or anything like that. Just just go in from there because there's no point in jumping in buying loads of gear. No, then, if you don't know how to use it. Yeah, I started just shooting black and white and stuff oh, like okay, that. Oh, okay, cool. And then I got a Bronica after that and then I've st sort of gone digital afterwards. Yeah. Because I, I enjoy film more, but like if I can say you're starting out, I suppose you, could, you can pick up digital SLRs quite cheap now, so I suppose you'd get a, a, a D50 or, 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 or a 350D or something like that. Do you think it's worth sort of spending some time with other BMX and other photographers and just getting an idea of what to look for? Well, yeah, I've only been with BMX sometimes today because yeah. I met those guys first day and I already, oh, learned, okay. I already learned stuff today from, there you are. From, from those guys. So, like, that's so just hang out at some BMX uh, skate parks and whatever? Yeah, like, everyone's really friendly, so if you ever see someone taking pictures, you can go up and ask them questions. Don't like, don't, don't grill them, but you, know, you can go up and s see how they're doing it and stuff. So that's what I asked Chris earlier, because I always used to go wild with the light meter and stuff, and then he just puts it out and gets it till it's right instead of, you know... Yeah, just, he sort of does it by eye, doesn't he, rather yeah, yeah. than using and his eye pictures eye are really good as well. Yeah. And Craig, Craig's really good as well. I'm pretty sure he doesn't use the light meter much, so, like... I know, I always used to faff about with light meters and stuff, but... But I suppose not always, doesn't always matter, does it? No, not always. I suppose sometimes it would, but you haven't got to, you know, go wild with it or anything like that.